Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. You know, Thank you. Over the last few weeks, I've been challenging our convictions. Praise the Lord. Those of us who have been consistent for a while, you know that I have been probing our ideologies to examine the foundation of the things that we believe and why we believe them. Transformation is a product of replacing your old ideologies with another that is new, that is sustainable and is able to take you to the place where God wants you to go. It's not enough that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. It's not even enough that we know that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. Like the lovely lady there shared that she knew that there was a place, there was a, a prophetic destiny for her life. But knowing it, brothers and sisters, is not enough. You must know how to get there and what it takes to get there. And then you must commit yourself and this is one of the major problems with the body of Christ. We teach a lot about where we are going and where God is taking us and the fact that there are many prophetic things reserved for us and that is not a lie except for the fact that if believers are not equipped and shown how to live where they are to that prophetic destiny they will be frustrated with time. The Bible says hope that is deferred can make the heart weary. Hallelujah. And so our job in this place is not only to reveal to you that there is a prophetic destiny for every single one of us in Christ. That there is an agenda of the spirit. That there is an intention in the heart of God for the nations and for us as individuals. But to guide us through the spiritual principles that will transit and transform us to that plane. And if you subject yourself to these teachings, listen to me, listen to me. If you subject yourself to the truths you are receiving here and you open up yourself wholly, wholly. The Bible says how that Joshua followed the Lord wholly. Was it Caleb? The Lord wholly, not half-hearted. There are many of us who, um, we love the Lord, but we are not really convinced about spiritual things hallelujah so our perception about spiritual things are just on the average you are not extreme you are not fanatic enough about your belief of spiritual things so you can bend when you hear anything else but the bible says be steadfast be immovable hallelujah you must be rooted in something listen let me tell you something. If you ever hear a teaching here and you doubt its reality, then don't keep quiet about it. Probe what you've heard. And if you think it is not consistent with the word of God, throw it away. Do not entertain anything in your heart you do not believe. Hallelujah. There are many of us that have believed the teachings of men of God for the purpose of solidarity not because it is a revelation we plan to apply hallelujah 
probably there are many of us that believe some of the things that we share in this place simply because you are a worker and you have to believe it is that true if you were left all to yourself you would not agree with some of those things why deceive yourself kick away anything your spirit does not agree with and you must embrace something that is strong enough for you to be audacious about are you getting my point there is no point standing for nothing if you don't believe in prosperity don't behave and pretend like you believe it probe its reality until you are convicted for or against it if you do not believe in the anointing and the ministry of the holy spirit see it's a dangerous thing to follow the crowd whereas your conviction about that reality is not strong because in the end of it you will not get any results are, are you hearing what i'm saying very important so it's not enough to sit under this anointing and listen to the word of god the question is are you convinced that the truths that are brought are true enough for you to believe and hold on to that in the secret place where no one is watching you you know that this is still my conviction hallelujah i say this because there are many of us in the past maybe three four five years your spiritual life has not been stable it's been a journey like a pendulum right now you're even confused and you don't know what you believe again i heard a lady send me a text and said honestly since i graduated let me tell you sincerely i went to a church and i'm serving under that church and i've sat under that teaching for three two three months or thereabout and right now i don't even know what i should believe again if that becomes your testimony you will be angry in the future because your lot will be the same as those who never knew the truth in the first place there are certain things you must be able to believe that you can hold and know that I will die believing this truth. The terrorists we have in this country, they are convinced about an ideology and as ambitious and unrealistic, as barbaric and sarcastic as those ideologies are, they sit down and they believe that the ideologies will come to pass. And they run people give towards those ideologies people give their lives towards those ideologies what do you believe what can you stand for about god about your life about your destiny are you seeing the reason why many of us never experience the reality of god's life we just hop around anything that looks like the truth so you travel back home and you hear something else and then you stop praying in tongues and you say this thing based on what i've had now i'm not really sure it doesn't make sense let me stop and then you come back and you are refired and then you are praying and then tomorrow it's easy for you to bribe and then later on you say kite i need to repent where do you stand see the bible says i wish that thou art hot or cold you are neither hot nor cold you are lukewarm he said as a result i will spew you out of my mouth you must stand for something you must stand for an ideology you must stand for a dimension of truth it's like marriage you cannot marry every woman is that true you cannot marry every man so you see a pretty lady right now and say ah, where have you been if i saw you i would not ask rose out and then the next thing you see another person and say you see that's how many of us are there is a lot of spiritual harlotry and at the end of it we are infected with all kinds of viruses nothing stands so you used to pray and fast but you had something and right now you don't even see a need for it again then you hear another message and you are now confused so believers are swinging like pendulums If your life must move forward you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the Holy Spirit listen let me tell you something I have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives 
and I am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives. Are you getting my point? When we began to pursue the things of God years ago, some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of God. But right now, the equation is still zero. They have not been able to stand for something true. There are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry. You don't even know what to call of the ministry. So, within two weeks, they say we are a healing ministry. And later on, they hear another hot message and they say, our focus now is holiness. And then later on, they say, our people cannot be poor and, 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 and make heaven. So, we are focused. Where do you stand? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us have been victims like that. You've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did because you had something that made them useless. And now you are looking for it, you cannot find it. Because what you have held on to is not working. Listen, we are going to pray in one minute. And you are going to pray and say, Lord, let me not pretend this thing. Help me to stand for something real. Help me to stand for something true. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside. Pray for one minute. I'm communicating to us a burden of the spirit. You must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about. Do you believe in divine health? Is it a reality to you? Do you believe in the supernatural power of God? What has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe? Was it supposed to change? What has not changed about your life? Why has it not changed? Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today and we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives. There are things I will never believe. I will never believe them. There are things I will never stop believing. There are things I'm open to change about because there are higher heights. There are things I have found that are true. Go ahead and pray. What have you found? Ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies. There's no need pretending it. It's possible that you're here, yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it. Proximity is not the same as connectivity. That you are close to an anointing, that you are close to a revelation, does not mean it will become part of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe. We cannot stand in the public because... We are ashamed of the, the stigmatizations and the mockery, probably, or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives. That you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married. And that commitment, you are so ashamed of it. Is that true? To an extent that when you hear people talking, and they say, how about you? So who is for this weekend? You just laugh. And then you feel to say, no, 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 no. I, I, this is not my ideology. It is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come. Hallelujah. Every great man is fanatic about something. And if you must ever experience greatness, especially in the spirit... 
you must have something you are convinced about. And you must allow the Holy Spirit to probe your convictions. Very interesting scripture. The Bible says, can we have that scripture again? There is a way that what? Seems right. Seems right unto a man and appears straight. The road is not straight. <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing, it is a straight road. Hallelujah. Like a drunkard. When a drunkard takes eight bottles of beer, he can see this door right here. Is that true? Based on his perspective, the door is here. And he will go convincingly. Now, whether or not he's right will be shown shortly. Praise the Lord. He can see a gutter. And according to what his eyes is seeing, he's seen a staircase. Right? And he reaches to that gutter. And with every sense of conviction, he will attempt to climb only to find out that the light he saw was darkness. Now the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. Many people have different ideas in the body of Christ, in the secular environment, across our territories. We have our ideas about the path to success. We have our ideas about the way to know God more. Is that true? We have our ideas about ministry. How it should be. We have our ideas about marriage. We have our ideas about prosperity. We have our ideas about the will of God. About rapture. About the coming of Christ. About Satan. So we live in a society where we have ideas. In the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs, about our work. There are those who believe that walking is an insult. Is that true? There are those who believe if you are not walking, you are not yet a man or a woman. You are still a child. We have all kinds of ideologies. But the Bible says there is what? A way. It seems right unto a man. But in the end, look at it. The dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong. You see why it is dangerous? Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you took a 10-hour journey or 12-hour journey to Lagos and you followed a wrong road. And after 12 hours, you meet a, a military man on the road. And he says, where are you really going? And he says, sir, the truth is Lagos. He says, ah, you are at the other side of this nation. So it will take you at least 24 hours 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything looks the same. It is time that shows what is true and what is false. When you plant a crop, both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases. But when you allow time, it will show the difference. All of us right now are here. We can jump. I am successful. Oh, the Holy Spirit is working with me. The life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid. And those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way. One of the things that intrigued me, I, I remember then 
when I was in secondary school, you know, we wanted to make it so much. Every subject that we had to study, we took it very seriously. And um, I did fine arts. And one of the things that, that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives. Right? Perspectives. It was a very interesting subject for me. Because when we were being taught that um, lesson, we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing. Is that true? And they called it what? Perspectives. And so when we were given assignments, they will tell us from so, so, so perspective, draw this building. Praise the Lord. There were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective, they must be represented in your drawing. Is that true? And I enjoyed it so much. But then I got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone. But that it was a revelation that was applicable in life. Perspectives. Everyone say perspectives. That it matters your interpretation of life. And everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from. Are you getting my point now? If we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside, we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside. Is that true? Based on what the artist is drawing. That was the information that his eyes could pick. He may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here. And then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it, my goodness, you would think Koinonia has been held in a stadium. Perspectives. So it is possible, please listen to me, that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life. Are you getting my point? And be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective. It's one of the biggest problems with the body of Christ. And so, a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase. Are you getting me? And a good life and a great life and from his perspective, that is all there is to the Christian experience. Are you getting me? And then the Christians in places like Iraq and Iran and the Israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood. It can cost you your life. This is their perspective. Are you getting what I'm saying? And to them, it may not interest them so much when you are teaching. This guy here is teaching, I have come that you may have life. Is that true? And have life more abundantly. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be poor. Whereas another person, looking at the same truth from another perspective, begins to speak and say, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. If it will cost me my life, so be it. Yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective, he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven, there is a fight and this is his perspective. Now the trouble starts, hear me, when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective. You see where error begins to come in. When we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body. Hallelujah. And so I'm here 
this is the perspective I've seen. And now I look at the person in Iraq and I say, this guy does not have faith. If he had faith, guns and bullets will not enter his body. Whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here. Are you getting me? I live in a house that is secured digitally. And these guys here are speaking and say, Lord, help these people not to be carnal. Let them not miss heaven. Let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread. Yet we are all supposed to be believers. And then there are others. Watch this. That this is not even the object they are looking at. They are looking at something else. Are you getting my point now? They are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty. They are looking at something entirely different. And from what they are seeing, they fish out all sorts of doctrines. So they are not even here. They are not even here. They are not even here. It's not different dimensions of the same truth. This is what the Bible calls another gospel. Are you getting my point? I marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel. And all of those people will come together under an umbrella called Christianity. We believe we are worshipping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects, for instance, in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects. There are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. But everybody, when they say, fill your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian. And the Bible says there is a way. Everybody said there is a way. Now the trouble is, everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues. And it is important that you get to a point in your life. This is why you find out, have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries and different churches? Have you seen the commotion that happens there? During things like fasting and prayer or, or maybe Christmas or New Year or something. Everyone comes with his perspective. Why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes? Somebody said, because Jesus died for me. He didn't die to make me suffer. And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy, who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense. And this other person is now speaking and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon? There is global evangelization. Souls must be won. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels, there are, there are many. There are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said, some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said, they are vessels of clay. It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least they are vessels of wood and then the bible says there are vessels of silver and then there are vessels of gold are you not are you seeing now that in the body of christ vessels are not the same it is called a great house the bible gives us the parable of 10 virgins they are all virgins meaning they have been spotless is that true so it's not talking about believers and unbelievers he was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. 
So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they did. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies. It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord. Oh. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, calm down. Calm down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, how are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way. That seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books that try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it and truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it and entered something else. There are others who read it and nothing happened. Lift your hands and say, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Please say it, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Jesus said it this way. I am the way. Not any prophet, not any apostle, not any teacher, not any pastor. I am the way. You follow men, you will follow a lot of things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in your life is to follow Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone be true. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders, multiplied people and all of that, Jesus is being glorified in that ministry. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. There is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life no matter how nice it sounds there is something you can hear no matter how ugly it sounds it will make you a wonder in life there is something you will hear 
that will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says, be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said, there is a way. There is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true. Hallelujah. We believe, we are so convinced. We've argued it that this is the truth. Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty. Meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit according to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence and his spiritual argument, as powerful as they were, they were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got A1 in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now one day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why you see brothers and sisters. It's part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast. Because I realize that when I stand on this stage, it's a privileged position. Not everybody is daft spiritually. Pastors, never forget this. When you stand, there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking. This is the situation. The guy had been called a great man. Like we men of God are. We just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great, great, great one. So according to that perspective, I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. he says, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual on that fateful day. There were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla and they kept quiet. Worship team sang and the guy wore suit, he came up. And he began to speak. When Aquila and Priscilla heard, they said, wow, this guy has great potentials, but there is so much you do not know. How do you feel when someone tells you that? Embarrassing, right? If you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth. Are you getting my point now? 
The Bible says when they had, what happened? They took him like a boy. Ha! Ah, amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache got healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking, you see the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses. Areas of excesses. Areas where his eye had not seen. When they took him, what happened? They expounded. They said, all right, there is the baptism of John. But did you know that Pentecost happened? The guy said, no. The person who taught me did not teach me that. Probably the person who taught him, taught him as Alpha. Maybe he was one of the scribes. The scribes are the suspects in this teaching. Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody is saying your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people. But could it be, brothers and sisters, that you were taught about spiritual growth, but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom? And that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience. And if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension, you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete. What if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone. Are you hearing me? That there are times that if need be, you may have to die for your convictions. If you open your heart to that dimension, then you can enjoy the blessings of God. Buy all the flashy cars, buy great houses, but they never take your place because you know that you are a born servant. Your Christian experience becomes more perfect. Are you getting me? What if you have been taught that the only devil you have is the devil in your mind? There is no real devil anywhere. There are no demons anywhere. Is that true? What if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith? And all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness, rulers, spiritual wickedness, and you embrace the perspective. You become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant christian 
it makes your Christian experience richer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it is for this cause, Ephesians chapter 4, please, verse 10. It is on account of this completion. Listen, please. That he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens. Verse 10, verse 11. And he gave some what? Apostles. And some. And some. And some. And some. Perspectives. He gave unto them. He engraced his body with gifts. Listen to me. Revealed perspectives to them. There are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church. They can host a convention. They can lift wheelchairs, but they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? The ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there. If you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up, there are people like that. There are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life? Just locate them. You are not going to hear any revelation. I traveled somewhere and while I was there, it was, it was a, a, a conference. And there were lots of prophets there. Hallelujah. And I was amazed to see how these guys, their understanding of the word was so little. You know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny. Not, it's not an insult. I'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was. But my goodness, my goodness. These people, these people zeroed down the prophetic. It was almost prophecy but at will. I've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people. But I'm not called into the prophetic office. The grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you. So for me, I know that to prophesy, it must happen with fasting and prayer. It's not a gift for me. I don't look at you now and say, except I'm lying. You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say you. There are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever... The prophetic gift must be activated in me is on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12. Why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says, Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says, these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints. Comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry. To the end, that verse 13. Till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh God of Joshua Selman, arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that, there's, there's anything wrong. 
I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care, that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people gifts in the body of christ that reveal the wisdom of god they have rejected the ministry the trouble is the bible says at the end let's have that scripture again at the end it will tell on you there are ministries for instance who love god but they have no desire for excellence in fact their interpretation of excellence is carnality is that true you ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe Dunamis TV, the people don't listen. Let me go on this, let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel, but you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe some day miss message. So please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access there are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago and it was so much. You know, then... Now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> For me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. 
And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, to stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I would not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen, if you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries, they cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe, that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment, there are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benue. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing. And get blessed. Billy Graham. It was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was not, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And they were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God. Don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so 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 person's tape. Throw it away, and you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas, there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry. And he gave me the dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality. See, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen, the way we were trained, huh? hear me. If I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you. 
and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. Yes, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you will ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is, it, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinching or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place, and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive, they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues, are you getting me, is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time, I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we had to learn it. And then the man, that was my first experience with you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16. They know you have not been, you have not been following. Because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month. That we, This memory you see. It's not just that. Okay the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it. But if I were born and bred a Pentecostal. Pure Pentecostal. Maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? For now. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And I said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darlene Jack. As we are busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. 
that on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not, you go home, straight there, you are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call, you know how the Bible says it, rebuke one, then call another, you are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to, anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet, no matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this, no. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. <laughs> Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car eh? or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter typed. And the reason is that you have been a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. <laughs> have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all this boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from Brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God, but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer. It's still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God, mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy, very short guy, 
my goodness. Look, that guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me. And he said, there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message unseen. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message unseen. And if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it very quickly. We are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to... You see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with IK, we traveled... Two years or so ago. While we are ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord... How are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor, you are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. and say, when you, are free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet David danced. Yet it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. 
Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God. I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, I'd rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing. Across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now and then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality, I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach and I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me. Scared me in a way that I said, ah! And then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything yet. You are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you, but God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel, these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. 
people will come and sit down and their sweating heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who have people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samadhi Ami. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly, but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, 
why do ye also transgress what by god is asking you a question which will you choose to uphold to transgress the traditions of men you are in a place and the lord is asking you lay hands on this sick body and you say no kai i'm not i'm not used to it i'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church that's not what i'm saying but you are in your house they've never seen the laying on of hands and god is saying go ahead and do it if you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death someone will die and you transgress please let's go back you transgress the commandment of god so that you will keep your tradition next verse for god commanded saying honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother let him die the death next verse but he say whosoever shall say to his father or his mother it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me verse 6 and honor not his father and his mother he shall be free thus have ye made the commandment of god of none effect you can make the power of god the word of god the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's there's nothing praying in tongues is just jargon it's just rubbish but something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience it may not be your fault you were not taught but now that you have heard the word it puts pressure on you to make a decision whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to it's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual we love things happening normally let it be happening the way i have always known it and the moment i see another perspective then it is not of god it is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up it is not done this way it is not done this way i've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage putting a little place like this to honor the man of god and guests is carnal everybody is one before god and in those churches when the pastor comes he can sit anywhere once it's time for someone he can come out it is lack of excellence yet it may not be embraced as thus it may be termed spirituality god is speaking to you could it be that if you embrace a dimension of god you would have passed the interview you entered the interview as a man of god not i as an employable person praise the lord you didn't dress well because you felt the holy ghost is with me and you entered the people were looking at you young man keep quiet i can't keep quiet this is what i believe because you were not taught the principles of excellence you called it spirituality but you've lost your job because of it you were not taught diligence that a christian is also an agent of national transformation and time to walk in the office you are fasting and praying and you are not doing anything you left your job undone when it was time to promote you you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit physically they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group are you hearing what i'm saying and there are people who just sit down and feel i know all the principles i know the principles of business expertise i understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy i'm telling you the truth when satan comes 
he finds the dimension you have ignored in God that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell there are anointed believers with no character because they've been taught it's all about the anointing once the anointing is in the building people must come so you can be sleeping around you are anointed and you know we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things and you come back and see the hand of God it convinces you that God is with you you do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you Samson said I will arise as before and all of a sudden he found out that is here he said you have been weighed O king in the balance God weighs men oh. he won't weigh you in one day he will keep weighing you you will be. that's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once four years ago this man was a great man everywhere but now the lampstand has been taken let me tell you God can take away the candlestick of men and give others read your Bible he took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person. May God not take your position and give another. Saul was still in the palace whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. He was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, meet, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it and run into problems. I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us. And then I listened to an apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. And he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry. He said, never try to do to people what only God can do to them. Deliverance. That was it. I learned how to sleep soundly. Because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me am awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once. It was getting too much. Everybody would call at every time. I became a receptionist. Hundreds of phone calls, like every 30 minutes, someone is calling and the person can cry for 50. I was wearing out, literally. And then the Lord said, why don't you put something like that? Some of you are in that thing right now. You, have, you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person. Visitors came to your house. You went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti. You bought them books. You went to Jordan Bookstore, bought books. I want you to be spiritual. Now you are in trouble. And the people have turned their back and they are insulting you. Because you want a good name. Is someone learning something here? There are many of us. You are spiritual. But if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp.
I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels, there are dimensions in the spirit. I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit to all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up to the dimensions of the spirit that are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that. I know that you've gotten something. But I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared. To fulfill your assignment in life, you need divine guidance. Oh, this is very important. You need divine guidance. No man outgrows the need to be guided. No man. No matter how spiritual you are. You can never outgrow the need to be guided by God. Only a fool in his heart will say there is no God. Confusion, I wrote here, is part of the limitation of mankind. I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction. Divine direction in our lives. Divine direction. Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now. That if a prophet, a genuine prophet of God. Would enter here right now. And have a one on one session with us. And say by the grace of God. I will talk with you one on one and let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. Some of us probably are finished you want to know am i still going to be in zaria am i going to go somewhere is that the scripture what did i say proverbs what oh no no psalm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 i'm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 we need divine direction in our lives you can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? All that. The steps. The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came... That's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this. Because many of us right now, 
we are in a straight betwixt. You are ready to enter a relationship, but you need divine direction. You are ready to get married, but you need divine direction. As a gentleman, you want to start putting structures to your life, but you need divine direction. And let me tell you something. It is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you. You will suffer. You will struggle. Nothing will work. When you are in the geography, when you are in your assigned place, everything is commanded to work for you there. Why do we need divine direction? Our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure. This is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure, which many times is limited. I need divine direction because if God does not direct me, I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of Koinonia. I can look out and say, wow, there's a crowd inside and outside. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. It's okay. Nothing more. Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men but his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11 from verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, your body is also full of darkness. 35. There's a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. That means you can be making decisions based on a truth you think you know. Whereas it's wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, I will never marry a man who is rich. Who is not rich for instance. I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light. Whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that it's darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So, we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, 
thou has well seen that means you can see wrongly he said for i will hasten my word that you have now seen that means your speed in life is also based on your perception you don't see wrongly you will not move fast in life but the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord very quickly what does it take to receive divine direction from god i really feel sad i'm just doing a lecture i'm, I'm so sorry our time is gone and i want us to pray number one requirements to be divinely directed by god number one you must admit that you are limited you must admit you must break your pride and admit that you are limited it is not listen it's not an insult look up please i want to teach you this about life please and please do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything are you hearing me do not even if you are a celebrity do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything every time i see our daddy come and sit down here i am very humbled by his humility brothers and sisters this is a professor the brightest and the finest in his field yet our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down and a small boy like me his son is just talking it's like i'm talking to my father and he's writing how many of us can have that humility are you hearing what i'm saying you must admit that you are limited no matter how prophetic you think you are no matter how apostolic you think you are many times when i cry before god i say lord help this small boy if you don't help me i will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid that's how i cry before god i'm not insulting myself i know it's the truth and i say lord send your word send me the word of the lord How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of perdition if you choose where you want to stay by yourself you say i want to stay in lagos or abuja my tama or somewhere there somewhere peaceful i don't want some of you are already laughing but god is saying that's not my path for you you are saying i take authority over it you really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in zaria how about gentlemen I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be honored, where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits and members who just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet but you see listen it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that runneth if you cannot wait for god to direct you i'll never forget i was rejoicing the year we we're about to prepare for koinonia to start i was so happy because i was saying lord my share my assignment now is over let me run and find something very useful and do let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere let me just enjoy my life and then god summoned a meeting at once and when i went i almost fainted the day god told me those who were around my reaction it was like how about god how about god and i've come to a point where i don't give god if god says stay in zaria forever i stay in zaria forever 
I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us. We will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He say, I want a healing ministry. God says, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners, so God speaks in diverse manners, but in these last days he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. It says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit, either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also. It says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters. Dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt, they were forewarned. Genesis 41, don't turn there. Just write it please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3, from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says God came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10, they all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. 
But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas and Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is that? Ananias in a dream, in a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul, he's in a house. He prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too. Elderly people, not just elders in church. Men who have had the advantage of age in their lives. But my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship. One great platform to receive spiritual direction. You can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life. Hallelujah. Wisdom to your life. I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking and I was sharing with him about something and while I was talking to me it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been matching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling, when I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them. I'm wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that. And that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down. Honestly, things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudo called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 to 15. I want us to read that one. 
second Kings chapter 8 guys don't project it until I ask us to do so so that our time is gone I mean this project this one now second Kings 8 verse 7 to 15 is the an interesting story between prophet Elisha the king of Syria called Ben Haddad and one boy called Hazael who later became king let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic let's read it very quickly Elisha came to ben, to Damascus and ben Hadad, the king of Syria was sick and it was told him saying the man of God is come hit our next verse and the king said unto Hazael Hazael was his boy like his servant take a present in thy hand see why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty-handed and go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? Inquire of the Lord saying, shall I recover from this disease? I want to know so that I can put my house in order. Next verse please. So Hazael went, hold on. Hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life. Hazael went to meet the man of God and took a present with him even of every good thing of Damascus 40 camels burden and came and stood before him and said thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria has sent me to thee saying shall I recover from this disease now watch this verse 10 and Elisha said unto him go and say unto the man of God thou mayest certainly recover he said how be it let me tell you the truth I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it the Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just found his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says... He settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their stronghold shall thou set on fire and their young men will thou slay with the sword and thou will dash their children and rip up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life the next verse and Hazael said but what is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing and Elisha answered the Lord has shown me that you are the king I came as a boy but by prophecy God is showing that you will be king but I'm telling you now when you become king correct your mistakes this is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry, a, I'm joking, no? you are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me. You go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25. Down to the end. Tells us about the famine in Samaria. And how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry. And in 24 hours it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end and then in isaiah 38 we read about hezekiah hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death and isaiah the prophet came and said put your house in order thus said the lord you shall surely die and isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying he said oh lord remember and the lord sends the prophet to go back and tell him i have added let me pause ah let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday, but what he's saying now? Listen. 
God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change, sorry. But his plans can change. Please, I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively, but I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil, he can decide that you go by road. So, the destination you arrived, but the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday and we never open ourselves to find out could it be that God is saying something else. We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying, it proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are bosome friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Severe yourself from that relationship. Listen, it's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen, if God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on his own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt, now watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rema. That the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally, prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11 from verse 27 to 30. That's the first time we see that prophets came into a city. So the ministry of prophets has been there long in the Bible. Not a prophet, prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11. From verse 27, prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming. And the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets, not one. Many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch, 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And he signified by the spirit that there should be great death, famine throughout the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar, 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul. And he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, 
they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord. I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying, start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying, start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated. And one time we got talking and I said, look, young man, listen. You do the job. The job he was doing, he was teaching in one school. Guess his salary, 5,000 naira per month. And if you don't come to teach the students, they will still deduct something from it. I told him, remain there. He's teaching you discipline. He's teaching you submission. God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I call you, but wait. You say, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And you say, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry, I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. Ah, what's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home where did it go to say it's still there oh, but i i found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it i said really wisdom from experience could it be that this is a revelation for someone you finish school you've done everything for one year you did not get a job people think you don't have faith god is teaching you the art of waiting it will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly, you are virtuous. 
Oh Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying, I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God, he says, oh, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah. But the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. In just five minutes that we have left, listen, before we pray, I want you to examine in one minute all the wrong decisions that you have taken because you did not seek the assistance of the Holy Spirit. God told you pray about it. You said it does not matter. If only you prayed, if only you took out time, you probably would not have started the ministry. Now you've started the ministry and it's killing you. If only you took out time to pray, you would have known that that friend is a deceitful person. He looked like an angel. When he came, he told you he was a man of God. Little did you know that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But God was telling you pray. But you said, I'm in love. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, I refuse to move without you. I refuse to take decisions in life without you. No matter how achievable they look. You can become successful without God. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It pays. It pays to be divinely directed. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way of doing ministry that seems right. There is a way of doing business that seems right. There is a way of getting a job that seems right. There is a way of getting a husband and a wife that seems right. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way of trying to get the anointing. There is a way of trying to access revelation that seems right. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I don't trust myself outside of you. I need you to help me. Help me. Help me. End confusion from my life. End darkness from my life. I'm tired of making stupid decisions. I'm tired of doing the wrong things. Go ahead and pray. I'm tired of cycle after cycle of mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes for as long as you learn the lesson. But when it becomes the theme of your life, you need divine direction. In one year, you have entered 10 relationships. They have all landed you in trouble. You need divine direction. You have entered 10 businesses. They've all landed you in trouble. You've started ministry everywhere. But you've ended up with scandal after scandal. Tonight is the time to flog it out with destiny. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I'm tired. Oh, I can't go anywhere without you. My destiny is at the mercy of your voice. My destiny is at the mercy of your word. Koinonia is at the mercy of your direction. Go ahead and pray. Just two prayer points tonight. Where is the place of my healing, oh God? Direct me. Where is the place of power? Where is the place where I will access life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point tonight is we're going to say, Lord, the direction I need to break the current limitation of my life to a new experience. Listen, brothers and sisters, I submit to you that the difference between where you are right now and the next level of your life is just one direction. A journey of 40 days can be turned into 40 years when you do not know the road. 
are you hearing what i'm saying if only you were divinely directed you would have gotten a job by now you would have even been maritally settled there are many people who are barren if they can be directed to the right ministry barrenness will bow at once you are going to pray you know the areas of your life where you are tired of confusion submit yourself tonight and lift your voice and say let light come let light come lead me to the place of light oh god are you praying tonight inside and outside some of you you're coming here tonight is the answer to the voice of god in your life where you will hear truths that will connect you to the next level of destiny the place where I can learn authentic ministry lead me to the place where I can find mentorship and building direct me show me light from scripture show me where I need to settle down I'm trusting you where is the next place of the assignment pray Reveal it to me. I don't want to be in a place you are not directing. Lift up your voice and pray. Direct me to my wife. Direct me to my husband. Direct me to the assigned job. Direct me to the circle of friends. Direct me to the messages. Direct me to the encounters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, between today and the miracle service on Friday, listen, pick any day of the week. It can be from tomorrow. Pick any day of the week and dedicate it to fast and pray. And the theme of that fasting is for divine direction in your life. Are you getting me? List all the things you know. Don't pretend like you have everything in order. You're going to say, Lord, this area, this area, this area, speak to me. I'm tired of silence from heaven. I want to provoke your voice. The messages you know by different men of God that have to talk about divine direction, get them. Sit under that anointing. Fast. Six to six, six to four, and settle down. Not the kind of fasting that you are answering every call and you are doing everything. Set to pick a convenient date and settle down. And I assure you, some of you, as you are praying, you will fall asleep. And in that sleep, you will see what you have never seen. And that's what will connect you to the next level. Some of you, as you are praying for the first time, you will see a vision, a real vision. Some of you will hear the audible voice of God. Some of you, nothing spectacular may happen but one direction from the word of God and if you have graduated here and you are thinking of leaving don't be in a hurry to leave settle down and give yourself one day and say Lord what is the blueprint for my life the Bible says lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me last prayer point reveal to me the next blueprint of my life oh God go ahead and pray where am I going from here? Maritally, financially, ministerially, pray. I'm tired of confusion. 
I'm a final year student. In weeks I will be graduating. But oh Lord, open the heavens over me. I'm about to start ministry. I'm about to start a business. Open my eyes. I'm about to start a job. Give me direction. Yeah. Yeah. I set you free. The power of God is going through his body. That's what is making him uncomfortable. In the name of Jesus, be free now. Be free now. I command your temperature to go down. Your son is free. Take. Hallelujah. Someone came. I don't know what it is that has to do with your leg. Is it pain in your joints or something around your leg? There's someone you came. You are not a regular worshiper here. Who is that person? The Lord is showing me someone like that with that case. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Once we call your case, we don't want to keep people so long here. Once we call your case, please run out quickly. Please. What's wrong with you? Anytime I walk, it always pains me. Anytime you walk, it always pains you. Where? How long has it been? Since when I was small. Bring a chair for me, please, quickly. What's wrong with you? Pain. It's paining you. Yeah. How about you? Please bring three chairs quickly, quickly. Let's save time. Just turn it. No, 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 turn it. God is healing heart conditions now. God is healing heart conditions. Hold on. There's someone, you have abnormal, what do they call it, medical students, help me. Heartbeat, irregular heartbeat. Irregular heartbeat. You? Okay, come. But there's another lady I'm seeing, she's taller than you. Irregular heartbeat. Sometimes it beats you even have to use your mouth. It's a very serious condition. Who is that? Please come quickly. Lord, we release now. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's wrong? Come, bring her. All right. Don't worry, I'm not saying you should pull up. Just, just remove your shoes, can you? God will give you a miracle here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please watch your screen inside and outside. Watch your screen. Can you see that if you are looking very well, can you see that one of these legs is shorter than the other? Can you see it, please? Now watch what the power of God will do. Sister, look at me. Open your eyes. Don't miss your miracle. All right? Tell us whether we are pretty. Are you seeing that one leg is shorter than the other? This is why the pain is coming. You will literally watch it grow right now. Are you ready? Watch it. In the name that is above all names. Watch this grow. Are you seeing it? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at, look at, look at what is happening to this leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you feel anything? Help out with the mic. What did you feel? Now try walking. Stamp it. Come. Get up and try to stamp it. Try to stamp it. Just stamp it. Try to. 
You still feel pains? You still feel pains? It's no. Are you serious? Come on, celebrate a miracle. Come, come up here. Jump. Can you jump? Look at. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where's the other lady? While the ministers pray for you. This is a simple thing. I'm telling you, don't go around just pulling legs and disgrace yourself. Because that's what a lot of people do. You like, this is not chambori. You disgrace yourself somewhere, someone injures you for nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God, sir. While they are praying so that we will save time, they'll pray for you. Hallelujah. This is, what's wrong with you? A fracture on your leg. Which of them? How long? Like seven months. Yes, sir. You've been walking with this. Yes, sir. You can't been... walk except you use yes, it. Sir. Look at me. My brother, I bring you life right now. Amen. I, look at me. Look at me. In the name that is above all names, I command the fractured leg to go. Amen. Let it join right now. See, look at what is happening to him. Look at what is happening to him. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the power of the Holy Ghost going through the leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, sir. Look at me. Can you walk? Look at me. Just start walking. Follow me. Look at this. Look at this. He came with crutches. Jump. Can you jump? Any pain? Fracture. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. Just got healed right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. A fractured leg. What happened to you, sir? Yes, I don't there was a friend. Who knows him? Who came here with him? Oh, you know him. He's a popular person. Is it true that he has been working with this crutch? Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Yahweh. I think we should give God some praise. Yahweh. Let's have the mic. Pastor Jake just prayed for him. What happened to you, sir? Make sure you don't tell lies. So, hallelujah. Actually, I, I had an accident. Listen, okay. The leg was paining me. The leg was paining you. Exactly. So, okay. When the man was, uh, when Pastor Jake prayed for you, it got perfect. It, it became perfect. Yes. Come up, come up, come up. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. Jump up. Look at this. Look at this. If your blood group is SS or AS, now is the time for it to change forever. Listen, I'm serious, I'm serious. Please make sure you believe we are not joking here. Outside, I see that there is a mighty miracle that God will soon do outside. AS. Hallelujah. You can connect for any member of your family. Anyone in this place, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we command AS and SS to change now to AA in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I sense someone has been healed in the ear. Someone has been healed in the ear. Please check. You came here with ear problem. Someone has been healed in the ear. The Lord is showing me someone who has been healed in the ear. Hallelujah. Sorry? My uncle has been treated for the past three Your uncle? Okay, hold on. I'm a my uncle. I have a tooth 
so every time your uncle has twisted yeah, how long I'm three years now anytime okay i'm running the uncle will be making some just remove your shoe let me make contact with it what's wrong with you sir irregular heartbeat. Eh? Irregular heartbeat. oh the irregular heartbeat watch it leave you now say devil go by the power of the holy ghost check yourself breathe in and out test yourself could you do this before breathe in could you do this before look at this breathe in and out breathe in and out breathe in and out you're free in the name of the lord jesus please ushers hold him let me just make contact with your feet hallelujah or bishop stand just pray with him he will pray with you check yourself you will be healed hallelujah so we can concentrate i i used to have i play hockey i'm a sport okay listen to this testimony i play hockey i'm a sportsman and over the years i've been having this muzzle pool muzzle pool okay yes, but outside there i was feeling something outside there his legs started shaking and right now there's no problem. right now he's healed power of the holy ghost blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord pain in the right hand there's someone i'm seeing pain here very severe pain you even cry who is that person it's time for you to rejoice pain severe pain is like a shock in your right hand who is that person pain no 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 check yourself please check yourself and if act on it come on watch this could you do this before could you do this before watch a miracle happen could you do this before stamp it stamp it pastor stanley just prayed for him hallelujah the lord perfect you in the name of jesus christ how many of you are celebrating what god is doing in this place the hand the lord is showing me someone severe pain in your right hand please when we call your case just run out quickly you are the one good evening thank you where is the pain in your right hand how long has it been up to five years now. Up to five years. What's wrong with it? What happened? I don't know. Just like that. Whenever I stretch it, I feel pain. Can you turn it round, up and down? Hold on. Can you do that before? Yes, but no. But you, you feel pain. Yes. All right. Watch what will happen to you right now. You believe that? <laughs> it is such fun to see. Such fun to see. Say can lose. Hallelujah. Look at me. I come in a name that is above every other name. And we challenge this devil. It goes. Look at me. I want you to wind it as fast as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at me. Sister, what happened to you? Could you do this before? Could you do this before? In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfects you by the power of the Holy Ghost. What's wrong with her? What is this? I don't know. All right. I'm going to pray for you. Does it pain you? Yes. Does it pain you? Yes. The pain will stop. He is able more the name Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. Accomplish what concerns me. Devil of darkness, be gone. In the name of Jesus. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, bring this lady. Just bring her. For God wants to use you and make a mighty woman of faith. I'm seeing that I don't know what it is that this lady matched, but she matched something that is demonic. That's what is happening to her.
Jesus, do this for your glory. Do this for your glory. I set you free. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. I declare you free right now. Shalom. What's wrong? You dislocated your hands. Wow. God will give you a miracle now. I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord Everyone who brought a sick person, you are a guest. Please come and line up quickly. You brought a sick person. You brought a sick person. Please just pick up. God is doing some. You brought a sick person. Now is the time. Please come out. Let's save time. You brought a sick person. Outside, you brought an invited guest who is sick. Please come quickly. Bring them to the front. What's wrong with you? Please, technical help us. Pain. Under my stomach, I also feel pain in my chest. Pain. I feel pain. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe he will set you free. Listen, sweetheart. What you see here are not stage managed miracles. Are you listening to me? You believe that? Please, can I have a lady? Just lay your hands on her chest. One of the watchers. Is a demonic oppression, you will rise up totally. Fine, come, come, you're welcome. Come, what's wrong with you? Madam? Schizophrenia. What schizophrenia? I meant that. Schizophrenia. We, I think we should employ some medical people who is studying. You're a serious medical student, or you are a doctor. Eh? No, we have doctors, sir. Please come quickly, quickly. Appreciate him. Please, quick, 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 quick. Please hurry up, sir, and help us. Hallelujah. What is schizophrenia, sir? Schizophrenia is a psychiatric condition. Okay. That is characterized by hallucinations. You hear voices. You begin to see things that don't exist ah oh so it's like madness yes. like a psychosomatic condition you'll be free right now look at me my dear you believe that because devils he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free huh my dear hold my hands hold my hands can you look at me? Can you shout Jesus? Shout it as loud as you can. Jesus! Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That devil of schizophrenia. Go. In the name of Jesus. Who, who brought her? What happens to her? Okay, okay. It's going to leave her. Are you listening to me? It's going to leave her forever. All right. She sees things that are not there. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. And I'm seeing her waking up and shouting in the night. Yes. Is that true? Yes, sir. In the night, people are sleeping. She just wakes up and starts shouting. Yes, That's what the Lord is showing me. The Lord set you free now, sister. Look at me. 
it does not return to you again and i also see the spirit of depression that has come upon you the lord sets you free look at me look at me run down there and run back run i didn't say walk run 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 like you're doing 100 meters relay do it one more time just do what i'm asking you to do now run back again you are free in the name of jesus christ totally free totally free in the name of jesus hallelujah sir just please just spread yourself let's do that quickly just minister we have to save time because everybody must be touched this night hallelujah what's wrong with you sister this is a headache i've been having headache over here now yes and it keeps making me present go in the name of jesus okay i used to excrete blood you used to excrete blood it ends right now put your hands on your stomach that devil of darkness be healed now in the name of jesus christ i've been having this particular backache for backache for lay your hands there the power of God will hit you so hard. In the name of Jesus, be totally hope. In the name of Jesus, they pray for you. Hallelujah. That's all. All right, let's have all the sick people come and line up quickly. Sick people, quickly. your sickness those in the congregation be connecting some of you will be receiving the healing anointing in the name of jesus go by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus Pa 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 p
outside if you know anybody in your family listen who is not feeling fine or you brought the picture of anybody to connect or anything while we are praying whether it's hiv or cancer i like it to be connecting are you listening the worshipers are they, they are worshiping it's not just for the formality of it they are creating an atmosphere are you listening to me are you listening to me so i want you to connect are you listening to me? I want you to connect to what God is doing.
see? Is that true? Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Please hold this. Help me with the handkerchief, please. Can you see? Touch this. Touch this. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. That devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfect you. Give God a shout of praise. There is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sound of many waters, heaven on earth. of i know there are many people just go back to your seat but all of you who came out the five of you all of you come and hold your hands together all of you hold your hands together five of you but i'm going to pray for everybody look at me the power of god will touch you i sense a strong anointing are you listening to me a strong anointing lord let it move across right now in the name of the lord jesus Randa cross to croto bashigeteba. Randa pros restoration for your family. Great restoration in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Now delay. Any kind of delay. Kataba katabala. No, no, no. Don't come out. Don't come out. Please just stay where you are. Just lift your hands by faith. Because I see in the realm of the spirit two gates. Bring this lady. Ah. I see a lot of demonic things. Bakatata. Come out of this family now. In the name of Jesus. Every yoke of bondage. Batatata. 
Projects that are not completed by your family members. That hey! devil of delay is a spirit. Hear me. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariot. At the count of three, the power of God as he's hitting you is touching your family members. One, two, three. Like red, oh God. Like red, oh God. So Papa Takata. Every spirit of delay. Go. 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 I command God to be open. Break through. In the name of the spirit. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Let the doors of destiny be open. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you are a student here, yeah, I'd like you to shout amen. amen. You will know why you are shouting amen now. Because the Bible says that when Daniel was tested with his colleagues, that there was a kind of spirit that was upon him. And he was ten times suddenly his, his intelligent creation, his, his capacity. Listen, friends, I told you that this is the year you will do fearful exploits in your academics. Listen, and if you are in 100 level, happy are you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold on, leave her. Don't touch her. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, young lady. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the spirit. Let the power of God bring you forth. Let the power of God bring you forth. You will leave your seat and come forward by the influence of the spirit. Let it happen right now. A contention of light. All those affected will come out by themselves. Leave them. All those affected, they will come out. The Holy Ghost will take you from your seat and bring you here in front. You will come out by the spirit. Tap that lady. Just tap her. Come. All of them, no, they can't stand. The Holy Ghost will bring you right in front by your, by himself. He will pick you from your seat. No matter how far you are, he will direct you and bring you in front. Leave them, leave them. They will come by themselves. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. He will bring them to the front. He will bring them to the front by himself. It's a sign and a wonder of the sovereignty of Jesus. Look, ushers, leave that girl. She will come out by, them, by herself. If it's the Holy Ghost, he will bring her to the front. You will come out by the Holy Ghost to the front by yourself. It's the compelling power of the Holy Ghost and the castle in the spirit of power.
sister you come out by the holy ghost you run to the front now by the power of the spirit God will do a thorough work. Listen, I'm telling you, many of you will go back and see doors opening left and right. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. Sister, come out of her now in the name of Jesus. Be free. It's a year of supernatural exploits. I set you free now. Sister, I set you free. Because she's speaking a language in the realm of the spirit. And I hear what she's saying. The Lord is setting your family free. In the name that is above all names. For after the count of five, victory will be established. That's what the Lord tells me. One, two, Three, four, five. Please call this sister for me. Come, my dear. For God is not only going to set you free tonight, but God has begun a walk in your family. This is Kemi's sister, right? You will go back and see the dramatic things. The Lord is even restoring. I see financial restoration. Mighty financial restoration. There is a property your father wants to sell. Tell him not to sell it. There is a blessing coming. You just go and tell him. Are you listening to me? And for you, look at me. This is an evil spirit. Now, be free. Now. Now. This is an evil spirit. Look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you listening to me? Your family, can you come? Both of you stand. God is bringing a major, major restoration to your family. You believe that? Look at me. I don't know what it is, but the Lord is saying I should tell you that the Lord can bless you anywhere in Nigeria, in UK, or Canada. God just says I should tell you. Are you listening to me? Hold my hands. Lord, let this lady step into a new level of favor. Now, Kemi, for you, look at me. Is a restorative breakthrough God is bringing. What you are entering now, you would have, you are supposed to have entered it since, but the Lord is restoring to you in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power and the influence of the Spirit. Where's your friend? Where's your friend? The guy that came. Come. at me there are three breakthroughs god is giving you do you understand one i will not talk about it but you know what i'm talking about the second is in the area of your business and that restoration is going to come through wisdom and knowledge are you listening to me wisdom and knowledge but look at me god wants your heart like never before do you understand 
business books can only do so much. Are you listening to me? God must take your heart before he blesses your hand. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Give him an impartation, oh God. Let him know he met the king of kings. Strong impartation. In the name of Jesus. I command freedom for you. I command breakthrough for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come. You came from a university campus. Not Zaria. Where are you? You came from a university camp. Not Ebi Uzaria. I'm seeing someone from a campus. Not Ebi Who is that person? Please. Please come my brother. Come quickly. Come and stand here. My brother, look at me. God is going to cause a hunger for him in your heart. Like never before. This is not the kind of prayer you expected me to pray for you. But you don't worry. Is that true? To prophesy to my life because I've been experiencing so many. Please, technical help us. So, uh, I've been looking for God's direction in my ministry. Basically, my whole life. Look is at me, my brother. You, are, you just started ministry or something like that. Okay, you are going into ministry. Yes, sir. You leave ministry and pursue God. You are not equipped. You will die for nothing. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You just calm down. You need God. You need to experience the power of God. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. So that you don't jump into the error that people are having. However, yes, because you came here, yes, God will ignite a fire in you. Amen. It will first start with the spirit of prayer. Amen. It will fall on you. You will pray like a madman. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. And from there, God will begin to give you direction. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Hold my hands as tight as you can. <laughs> look at me. Just look at me. Lord, as you have shown me, ignite him with a fire. Fire upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. The spirit of prayer, let it fall on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the gentleman? Come. From where? Footmina. Footmina. Mina again. How many of you know that God is doing something in Mina? Hold my hands, my brother. You came, you will catch a fire. Look at me, look at me. You came with, an hung with a hunger. God will not leave you. Just lift one hand up. You will feel literal fire coming upon this hand and it will flow through every part of your body lord let it be done as you are showing me in the name of the lord jesus the name of the lord jesus that strong fire upon you it flows from your hand from your hand to every part of your body and look at me there is the spirit of leadership upon you you are going back with a strong spirit of leadership are you listening to me I'm hearing the name Rebecca. Sorry, we're out of time. We'll round up now. Rebecca. Rebecca. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca. Look at me. You are a student? No. Where are you? I'm in secondary school. You are in secondary school? Yes, sir. Will you be available if God uses you yes, to bring a great revival in your school? Yes, sir. What school is that? Jama Secondary School. Jama Secondary School. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Say after me, Jesus, I'm available. Like Catherine Kuhlman, let your fire come upon me. Now look at me. Look at, look at the answer to the prayer. You will never be the same again. It's a mighty impartation. You are the same name. Come. You are a student of where? Maybe you. Yes. What department? English language. You believe God can do great things through you? Huh? Yes, sir. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Use me. Use me. Anoint me. Anoint me. All right, now you have the answer to your prayer. In the name of Jesus, ignite her. 
See, it's like fire in your tummy. It's that of the spirit. You will never recover from it. Never. Never. In the name of Jesus. Foot me now. Okay, why did you delay? We have to hurry up. Please. Did you bring your prayer request? All right, quickly. Quickly, your prayer request. Outside, make sure your prayer request. If you are outside, please write it quickly and pass it. Just stay where you are. to set free to win souls for the kingdom this and more may the Lord release upon you foot in uh, but you need to dedicate time for God uh, you don't pray you don't spend so much time in the word there's no other way to grow hmm? does it make sense to you what I'm saying but you came because you trust God to put a fire in you. Hold my hands, please. Lord, please put a fire in him. In the name of Jesus, that you will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Your prayer requests, please quickly pass them. Just pass it to the last person. We have to be out of here. Just wait because I need to prophesy to the life of everyone. So do that quickly. Outside, even if you are just coming, wherever you are, please get a paper. Help one another with papers, please. Hallelujah. Please, quick, 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 quick. You should have written this before now, but write it quickly. Please. Because Pastor Jax is going to speak and prophesy the fire of evangelism. Are you listening to me? And Bishop is going to come and pray and prophesy and release the spirit of prayer. These two things. Are you listening to me? We have to do that quickly. The Lord is showing me doors that are opening. This is what I'm seeing. See, I'm seeing this thing again and again. Doors. 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 Many of you don't know the value of an open door. close to Jessica. Come. Yes, you. Come. My dear, you standing. You believe God can use you in a mighty way. You want him to use you. Lift your hands where you are. Lord, release an anointing upon her that will cause her to be mightily used. The Lord is showing me visions. I see two eyes being put upon you. Two eyes being put upon you. Lord, I pray that she will begin to see great and mighty things beginning from today. In the name of Jesus. My dear, God wants you. You believe that? And he wants you. This is not the issue of just run away from all these men that want to run around you. They don't even know where they are going. Focus on Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? You need him first. Ladies, what you need first in your life is not a man is Jesus. If you know how to love and relate with Jesus, a man will become an asset to your life. Are you listening to me? Hold on. We'll soon pray that prayer. That special prayer to send away some people out of your life and bring the people God has destined. Do you like that kind of prayer? But you must be willing and obedient. Sister, look at me. You want me to pray that God will anoint you? You want to pray? good friends, an association of people who love God. Love is compulsory, but relationship is not. Are you listening to me? You mustn't relate with everybody. You have a very tender heart. Let them not take you for granted. 
hold my hands. Jesus, please do something in her life, I pray. Please, give her an anointing. In the name of Jesus, bless her. Use her for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Steve Strings, please, can you come up and sing, There is none like you, your guitar. Hallelujah. While you bring the prayer request, Steve Strings will sing, There is none like you. I just sense that that's what we need. Do we have the prayer request, please, quickly? Quickly. If, let's, let's have it, please. Pour it here quickly, quickly. All right, there's this. If you've not written, just write. We'll give you one minute quickly. This is not a ritual. God answers prayers, I'm telling you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search to all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There's none like Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I've been waiting for the Holy Ghost to signify it. Please, everybody, stand up. Jesus is calling many people tonight. Listen to me. Many of you have heard me preach. You've seen the miracles. There are many of you standing outside. And the Lord is speaking to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come unto me. All ye that are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Hallelujah. For many of you, you have been running away from God. Or you have been born again, but it's one leg inside one leg outside no one condemns you but jesus is calling you today you came with your friend but i like you don't let someone sitting by your left and right make you not to make this decision for jesus christ you need jesus christ he said i am the way there are many ways he said i am the truth hallelujah i'm going to count one to ten i like you to leave your seat and run out at that count of don't be ashamed the Lord is talking to you. Many of you from the time I began to preach, you have come to the end of the road. As I count, as I begin to count one to ten, I like you to run and come out. One, two, leave your seat and run inside and outside. Three, four, run now, don't be ashamed of anybody. Five, outside, God is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Run out and come. No Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. Like Sing. The Leave your seat. Jesus. Forget about your friend. No other name. Forget no about other whoever name. you came with. Like the name. We are waiting for you. Seven. No other name. No other name. Come like to Jesus. Name. Run to Jesus. Don't let your brother make you sit back there. There is a better life. There's a higher life. There's a better life in Christ Jesus. Better than what you have experienced in eternity and in this world. No one. Jesus is still calling. Jesus is still calling. No other name. We have two more counts. Outside. Jesus is still speaking to a few people. Don't be ashamed of anyone. Leave your friend. Leave your relatives. Go on and come here. He's worthy of Nine. We are waiting for the last person. We are waiting for the last person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all of you in front. Just pray this prayer with me, okay? Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today, calling out to you. Please help me. Forgive me for my sins. Make me a new creature. 
Wash me with your blood. Make me clean. I receive salvation in the name of Jesus. From today, I receive power to live a holy life in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for your people in the name of Jesus. Blessed Holy Spirit, you see their hearts. I ask that God, you uphold them with the power of your word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that Lord, everything that has pulled them thus far, Lord, has pulled them far from you. Everything that held them back. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that Lord, you break them away from it in the name of Jesus. Give them strength to walk with you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ and you are forgiven by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put your, hold on. Just put your hands together for them. We welcome you to the greatest, biggest, most victorious family. Not Koinonia, the kingdom of heaven. God's own kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Jesus brought all of you here. I want you to begin a great and practical work. Are you listening to me? Please. We love you. I want your salvation to be genuine. Don't just make it emotional and then go back. Uh -uh. Are you listening to me? A Christian's life must be backed up by a radical shift. You must leave the things you used to do. There's power. You must break away from ungodly associations. There must be a practical step. That's why the power is upon you. Hallelujah. Now, you do this for me very quick. Very quickly. The ushers are going to have your details. Are you listening to me? Tomorrow, you're going to have a special session with Pastor Jakes. He's going to talk to you. He's going to follow you up. And then we'll get all of you filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then you'll begin. Every time we get people born again, the moment we follow you up with some foundational teachings, once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you march straight to prayer band for one month. Hallelujah. You pray for one month. After that time, you'll be strong enough. We want our fruits to abide. Hallelujah. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Whatever has held you down, it leaves you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this be a new life for you. Please get up and follow the ushers. Please celebrate this harvest. Just follow the ushers. Don't worry, you will come back. Follow the ushers quickly. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, please look up. We, are, we don't have time. Pastor Jakes is going to speak just in a few seconds and release upon us the spirit of soul winning. Are you listening to me? Everyone must become a soul winner. Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. Because God is going to be giving some of us a new heart. It starts with your heart, a compassionate heart. If you are willing and ready for this, the Lord will visit you with it. Some of you will literally feel like fire on your feet. That's what I'm sensing right now. A fire will come upon some of you, your feet. Thank you, blessed Lord. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Please lift up your hands as we pray. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands as we pray. Blessed Father, Abba Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I ask that God, you release from heaven. You release a fire from heaven, Lord. You release a fire upon your people from heaven. I ask in the name of Jesus, let there be a visitation. Let the presence of God come upon you. Let the fire of God come upon you. A passion for souls. In the name of Jesus, let fresh fire, let fresh fire be released upon your heart. Your heart begins to burn for souls and pants for it. You will not find rest. You will not find rest. In the name of Jesus, 
your tongue, the fire of God comes upon your tongue. In the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of God comes upon your feet. The Holy Spirit will lead you to, to speak the word, to speak the gospel, the angels of salvation. Lord, we pray that be released in the name of Jesus. The four corners of this place, let them be released. Let the oil and the mantle of evangelism be released. We pray, Lord, I pray that you grant your people vision for souls, a hunger for souls, for souls. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Aprendo siba, rieto mianta. In tush ni mante, risu minta, mionte, itapila, suminante, ikusi krasa, rista minta, sumelete, ikopa suba la dalamaya, ikama no sabaya burn shapati ba. Lord, I pray that God is fire will burn continually. We pray to burn continually, Lord. We pray in their hearts. Our hearts will be on fire. Hallelujah. That's the spirit of evangelism. That's the spirit of evangelism. Now Bishop is going to pray. I pray this will fall strong on people. The spirit of prayer. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Lord, the spirit of grace and supplication rest in the house in the name of Jesus. Lord, the fire of the Holy Spirit and the glory of the altar of the Lord rest upon your heart. That your heart will yearn. dropped any prayer request here, I'd like you to know it will be answered. Lord, we pray. Stretch your hands and say, Lord, go ahead and let's pray. Lord, do mighty things. Solve problems. Bring impossible miracles. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus as we make contact with this request in the name of the Lord Jesus prophetically wipe the tears of many in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus Rakata prokoto prokoto baladaba. Rakata prakata 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 baladaba. Rakata prakata 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 baladaba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Every prayer point here, let it be met. In the name of Jesus, Lord, release supernatural miracles for the sake of Your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now lift your hands. I want to prophesy. This is the final thing and we'll go. Please, if you came here, now is the time for you to receive something. Please, don't go back the same. Hallelujah. Listen. See, the apostolic anointing is not just talk. Are you listening to me? The apostolic anointing is an office. Are you, are you listening to me? It's an office. It's not just apostle. This, no, 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 no. It's an office. No man works. The Bible says he gave unto some apostles. It's a position of authority. Are you listening to me? It's an office that is recognized in the spirit. It's, an elect, it's not an issue of prayer and fasting. It's an office. God gives us this office to open up doors for others. It's an election by grace. And if you believe it tonight, you will step into a level of blessing. Lift your hands. Lord, if I be a servant of God, truly called into this apostolic office, my God, confirm this anointing upon me. Once again, I invoke the anointing that was given upon me when Jesus appeared to me. My God and my King, let there be a performance. Ta 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 ta. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. I challenge thrones. I challenge dominions. I challenge offices. I stand in the anointing of this office. I compel every closed door over your life. Over your academics, delay in marriage. I release you. I call your partner to come to you in the name of Jesus. I pray. I pray that the favor of God, for He has granted unto me by grace, my God and my King. I see it like water flowing from the ground. Let the favor of God sweep. Let it sweep across this congregation. Outside, I prophesy favor. I prophesy favor. I prophesy favor. If you can hear my voice, receive favor. Receive favor. In your academic favor. In your financial favor. In your relationship favor. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy speed upon your life. And that of your family members. In the name of Jesus. Before the next miracle service. I prophesy. Run with the spirit of Elijah. Supernatural accomplishment. Exploit. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Exploit, exploit, exploit. Hallelujah. I pray for every project, whether in your life or your family, building project, capital project, businesses, in the name of Jesus, God of heaven, the one who is at work in this place, I invoke by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let there be grace for completion. Receive it. Receive it. Outside, receive it. Outside, receive it. I pray for your academics. 
in the name that is above all names i want to release it upon you and if you will believe i release five points in the name of jesus i release it i release it i release first class in the name of the lord jesus supernatural intelligence every dull mind i command you be productive be intelligent every course you cannot understand go back and challenge it now in the name of the lord hallelujah i pray against habit masturbation pornography whatever it is if it's a habit that is not of god this moment you have prayed you have fasted you have done everything you know to do but i come under the anointing in this office i command be free in the name of jesus be free in the name of jesus hallelujah i pray all those who are trusting god for life partners and for marriage listen please if you are not trusting god better put your hand we are not playing here we are very very serious if you are trusting god for i don't mean people coming around first and foremost any guy roaming around your life just to mess up your life i pray that tonight god will open your eyes in the name of jesus may god expose destiny destroyers this night may god connect you with the will of god for your life i command supernatural marriages for you and your loved ones in the name of jesus i command any kind of terminal disease and i see this the lord is showing me ladies many diseases infection whatever it is i cause it now to his root in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah i pray for your finances my god and my king if your word is true between now and the next miracle service if it is the god of heaven we serve you will receive a call if it is a god if it is god that we serve may you receive a call that will shock you i prophesy it i program your spirit to receive it in the name of jesus i hear a call is a call is a call that's what god told me it's a supernatural call receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah many of you who have been confused about your life especially men receive grace to sit down and be established in the name of jesus no more confusion the reason why you were born listen to me the reason why you were born between now and the next two weeks everyone here who does not know you are just roaming around the surface of the earth escorting men if god be god may the reason why you were born be revealed to you in dreams in visions by prophetic encounters by the revelation of the word in the name of jesus hallelujah finally i pray for you lift your hands there are certain anointings that god has put upon this house are you listening to me number one the presence of god i don't idolize this but it's true number two the favor of god the wisdom of god financial prosperity are you listening to me and such as we have my god and my king may it be released upon you now favor wisdom the presence of god the power of god the miraculous i activate the gifts of the spirit now all across the building the gifts of the spirit receive it gift of healing faith prophecy tongues interpretation of tongues i activate your spirit man visions visions i call for fivefold ministry fivefold offices 
Let the apostolic arise. Let the prophetic arise. Let the evangelistic arise. Let the pastoral arise. Let teaching graces arise. Ba ta 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 ta. Ba 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 ba. Ba ko toposia. Upon ladies, strange order of the prophetic. Strange order of the prophetic. Strange order. Strange order. Grace to see. Grace to hear. Grace to move in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. Please listen to me. In closing, all of you hear me inside and outside. Please listen. We're training people to be men and women of character. Are you listening to me? Not just anointing. It's not enough to have power. Those who are students, you must have character. This is the year you will demonstrate the character of the spirit. Be disciplined. Be dedicated. You can't be flying around. Every party cannot be it. Hallelujah. Your Christianity must bear fruit and everyone must witness it. Hallelujah. So as you leave this place, go and call all those people that cause you to walk in unrighteousness and let them know you have begun a new walk with God. I'm telling you, do it. Go and delete every ungodly song in your phone. Break all those CDs and kick it out of your house. You are either a Christian or you are not. Hallelujah. You are either a Christian or you are not. Say I'm a man or a woman of character. Yes. The character of the spirit must be at work in your life. Your conversation. You cannot be speaking as if you are not born again. And then when you come to church, you say, hallelujah, no. You must speak like a Christian. Are you listening to me? Say amen. amen. Inside and outside, say amen. amen. You must speak like a Christian. Hallelujah. You must act like a Christian. Act like Jesus is Lord of your life. Anything cannot be it. Be disciplined. You are a leader. And be humble. Say, I receive grace for humility. If you are an arrogant person in this place, I set you free from that spirit of arrogance. Be humble. Listen. Make sure by love you serve people. Are you listening to me? The greater one in the kingdom. Gone are the days of all these men of God. Ah, protocol for me. Uh -uh. The greater one is the one who can kneel down and serve. Are you listening to me? Take away that wrong mindset of ministry that has been given to people. Oh, you are the woman of God. You are the man of God. Bend down. Let your work speak for you. Let to wash the feet of others. Consider others better than yourself. Are you listening to me? Say I'm a Christian. If you are coming here for the first time, let me prophesy into your life. Please leave your seat and come out inside and outside. Appreciate them very quickly. Please come out here quickly. Come out here quickly. Please clap for them. They are coming. Ushers, lead them to come to the front. You are welcome. Give them a koinonia welcome. We'll soon be out of this place now. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, koinonia. Will you appreciate them? Hallelujah. 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 Please keep coming. We'll pray for you. I want to thank every one of you for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Especially for many of you who came all the way. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. We receive you. Hallelujah. We are happy. We are proud of you. We want to pray for you. That this will be the beginning of unusual hunger for God. That this will be the beginning of passion for the things of the spirit and that this will be the beginning of an unlimited life of breakthrough in the name of Jesus saints of God stretch your hands towards them as we pray we are praying for you may the Lord bless you we pray that God will make you better than you are in the name of Jesus for those of you who have been healed and touched I pray that your miracle will remain in the name of the Lord Jesus hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. 
share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.